Welcome again to Virtual Church, or Churchual, as one of my friends in the UK said to me this week. And I'm just going to invite a special welcome to the people who are joining us for prayer today, who are especially far away. We've had people join us um, from northern BC and the Sunshine Coast. Uh, we've had a couple of people from the United States and from the UK as well. So it is really good to gather with all of you and to be here together and welcome to our congregation of Holy Cross. We're doing an altered version of morning prayer and um, if you're part of the Holy Cross community, you've probably received one of the booklets in the mail. Uh, if you haven't and you'd like one, I can mail one to you. You can just email me, get in touch. And if not, on the website, you can uh, download by clicking on the link that is under this video on our website, uh, a copy of this and just print it yourself at home. So it's very easy to take part. During the services, uh, I'm giving a pause for the congregation's response and um, the congregation's responses are where it says people in the bulletin and um, they are in bold so you know what to say when. Um, we've got a lot of scripture to get through today because it's Palm Sunday, April 5th. It's hard to believe it's the beginning of Holy Week. So there's a lot of scripture so you're going to have to listen to my voice a fair bit unfortunately. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and, um, and to get ready to, uh, to read along if you'd like. Um, and we're going to be saying the psalm together and it's Psalm 118 and uh, it's verses 1 to 2 and then 19 to 29. So that's Psalm 118 verses 1 to 2 and then 19 to 29. And we usually say that together. So if you've got a Bible, um, get your Bible out and, and read along with us. So before we begin, uh, make sure you've got your pamphlet, make sure you've got your Bible. If you haven't, feel free just to listen. That's cool too. And um, we'll take a few minutes to just gather ourselves uh, ready for prayer, ready to spend time with God this morning. Let's begin. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. Begin with the psalm. Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and then verses 19 to 29. We read together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, he who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We will bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, he has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. 
Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, your son's triumph over sin and death has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify our hearts that we may follow where he has gone and share in the radiance of his glory. We ask this for the sake of our risen Lord. Amen. So our first reading today is from Matthew. Matthew 21, 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied with a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends the reading. Our second reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Here ends the reading. We move then to a second reading from Matthew. Nope, we're going to Philippians first. So Philippians chapter 2, 5 to 11. Five to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, so at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the reading. And now back to the Gospel of Matthew. This is the big one. It's Matthew 26, verses 14 to chapter 27, verses 66. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the, Jesus came, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12 and while they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all will become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny, deny you. And so said all the disciples. And Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. But the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Still see, see the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, 
Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him. Arrived with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back in its place, for all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scripture be fulfilled, which says it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used it to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one whom a price had been set, and on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. 
but when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So, after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with the Je- with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. After twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail to the king of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his lots of, divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they had put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, Darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling to Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, Let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was also a disciple of Jesus. 
he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day, otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Gospel of Christ. the words that are spoken and the words that are heard, may the Spirit of God be always present. Often, when we hear scripture, we are asked to imagine ourselves in the story, and there are certainly a lot of characters in today's story, many of whom we might find it easy to identify with. Now, I'm not sure why, but this year, the donkey that carried Jesus in on Palm Sunday really stood out to me, and maybe it's because I've been watching too much Shrek, uh, but I kind of picture the donkey as the sassy creature uh, from, uh, from Shrek, sort of walking in and hearing the crowds cheering and saying, all this for me? Oh, thank you. Uh, it's a thankless task being a donkey, but finally all of my hard work is being recognized. I just imagine him sort of strutting along, loving it. But this Palm Sunday, it's not really going to be like that, is it? I think this Palm Sunday, the donkey and Jesus would walk into empty streets thanks to social distancing. Excuse me. No gathering, no welcome, but Jesus comes anyway. It's hard to imagine Palm Sunday procession without the people, which is why it's so important that we keep gathering as a virtual church to remember the story and to journey with Jesus towards the cross. That's also one of the reasons we have that huge reading from Matthew today that walks us through the betrayal of Judas, the Last Supper, or the First Eucharist as we might call it, the arrest and trial and crucifixion of Jesus. But why are we reading all of this before Good Friday? It's a bit of a spoiler, isn't it? I think perhaps it's because that prepares us and focuses us for Holy Week. It would be nice to have the celebration of Palm Sunday and then the celebration of Easter without the uncomfortable bit in the middle. But then we would be ignoring the power of the cross. The focus in this story is usually on Jesus. He's the one being greeted, Hosanna in the highest after all. But the arrival of Jesus is a communal effort. Think about it. Jesus sends the disciples into the city to get the donkeys. The donkey is freely given, presumably, the crowds gather in welcome. They're all chanting Hosanna and waving their palms. Now, the word Hosanna means save us. Save us from what? Save us from the Romans? From ourselves? The people of the time wanted a Messiah that could overthrow Rome after years of being oppressed and persecuted. And who can blame them? I'd probably want the same thing, wouldn't you? It's a bit ironic that people are shouting save us, not knowing that God is about to save everybody, including the Romans. But it's by looking at the people in this story that we can find ourselves. There's the Last Supper, Jesus and the disciples. We might think of our own Eucharistic experiences and miss getting together with friends. We might also recognise ourselves as the ones hearing that Jesus say, one of you is going to betray me and being like, surely not I, Lord. It can't be me. Perhaps then as the arrest takes place, we might find ourselves identifying with the disciples, running for it, or maybe wanting to be like Peter, 
following from a distance, but when pressed, realising that we don't have the courage to give up our life for this man, and the cockerel crows. Maybe we'll find ourselves in the crowd shouting, crucify him, because that's what everyone else is doing after all. Maybe we're mocking him at the foot of the cross, or weeping, or like the centurion having crucified him, suddenly realising this was an innocent man. Oh my God, we've killed the Son of God. Maybe like Jesus, we've experienced feeling completely forsaken and alone. Maybe some of us are feeling that now. The cross is so difficult to face on Good Friday because maybe we feel a sense of shame that we're not worthy to have someone die for us. It might start to feel like God is an angry, wrathful figure who kills innocent family members because God's got to have God's justice and we're just not good enough to pay for it ourselves. So much judgment. But it's not really about us at all, is it? The cross is about God because it's God that's hanging on it. God's not a figure in the crowds with a long beard and a frown. God isn't the best version of ourselves on a good day, generous and kind and loving. God's not the worst version of who we are, wrathful, angry, vengeful on our worst days. We can't get to know God by looking at the best of ourselves or the worst of ourselves or trying to find ways to better ourselves. We can only get to know God by looking up at Jesus on the cross. Knowing God is about following Jesus, listening to Jesus, seeing what Jesus does, trying to emulate that. And Jesus is the one who takes the place of a servant and washes his disciples' feet. The judgment on the cross is certainly for all people, but the verdict is, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Jesus' forgiveness is for the centurion who stands in front of him, the women who have loved him, the friends who left him and deserted him. And it's for you and me. Jesus is God's way of saying, this is who I am. I will go anywhere for you. I will do anything for you. Wherever you go, I'm always with you. Think of Psalm 139. God knows our going out and our coming in. We're an open book to God. The heights of heaven, the depths of the earth, there is nowhere that we could go where God would not find us and not see what we've done or who we are. The cross, Holy Week, gives us time to reflect and renew our commitment to this extraordinary journey with Jesus. And remember that we are loved and forgiven in ways we cannot imagine and may not feel like we deserve. We're not expected to return it, it's unconditional, and we never get to attain those heights but we're still invited to try and to go with Jesus anyway. So this Holy Week, even though we can't be physically together, let's try and do that. Let's try and look at Jesus, learn from Jesus, and be Jesus for the people around us. Amen. We'll continue on page four of the bulletin by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come <coughs> again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, let us pray. We pray for the world, for the worldwide Anglican Communion, for our own Diocese of New Westminster, for our partner Diocese of Northern Philippines, Bishop 
Brent, Alois, and all the clergy and people of those dioceses. We pray especially for our partner parish in Toucan and their priest, Paddy Ezra Ketelong. We pray for Chuba Diocese, Japan, Bishop Peter Ikiaro Shibusara. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are victims of war, famine, injustice or natural disaster, and especially at this time for all affected by the coronavirus and to those who seek to bring relief. We pray for refugees and displaced people, especially Nadim Iniat and his family who are in Thailand as Pakistani Christian refuge, refugees as they wait for an acceptance letter from Canadian immigration. Lord, in your mercy. In our diocese, we pray for our Archbishop and Metropolitan, Melissa Skelton, and today for Father Matthew Johnson and the Street Outreach Ministry in the downtown east side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our neighbourhood, we pray for All Nations Church and in Toronto for St Andrew's Japanese Anglican Church. We pray for the community of Holy Cross and we give thanks for the technology that allows us to connect and for the Groceries for Seniors ministry active at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those in need, for those who have asked for our prayers, especially for Masuo Takisaki, Elizabeth Nato, David Sinclair, Mark Raja, Iris Reimer, Miwako Minato, Naomi Shimizu, Norman Pym, Carolyn and May, May Bailey, Alana Tatchell, Chicago Macaulay, Daryl Hall, Basil Azumi, Sawa Matsuga, Tsunako Maki, Mari Ohashi, Umi Sugawara, Gwen Lamacraft, Thomas Koren, and Jamie Leakey. Please take a moment to remember friends, family, and others who have asked for your prayers and say their names in silence or aloud. May the Lord deliver them and keep him, keep them in his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for our human race, you sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and to suffer death upon a cruel cross. May we follow the example of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, we pray as our Saviour has taught us in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and grant us peace. Amen. Wish you a very peaceful and reflective Holy Week. See you next Sunday.